Hello and welcome to Board Game Ninja. Today we will show you how to play Turing Machine, which was published by Scorpion Masquet. Alan Turing was a brilliant mathematician from the first half of the 20th century. He is considered to be the founder of computers and artificial intelligence. And he devised the Turing test. The idea is that a computer could be said to think if a human interrogator could not tell it apart through conversation from a human being. Alan Turing also came up with the Turing machine, which was a simple machine for implementing any computer algorithms according to a simple set of logical rules. In this game you are going to break a code only known to this Turing machine, which is made entirely out of cardboard. Your questions are the key and the machine answers only with yes or no. So choose carefully. Combine the answers you get through logic to break the code and win the game. Turing Machine is for 1 to 4 players, plays in about 20 minutes and is for players of 14 years and older. Turing Machine is also playable with more players, but sometimes you just have to share punch cards. Place the central hub in the middle of the table. Choose one of the problems from the rulebook or go to TuringMachine.info for millions of more problems to solve. Turing Machine presents problems with three difficulty factors. One, two or three gears. Let's start with an easy one. Each problem shows four to six letters, consisting of a question or criteria and a verification card. These go together and should not be mixed. Search in the deck of criteria cards for the matching numbers and place these open next to their letter. Find the matching numbers in the deck of verification cards. Every verification card has four numbers, so make sure you look for the right symbol. Place the verification cards next to their criteria. Since the verification cards are constantly picked up by the player, a dry erase pen is provided to write the appropriate letter on the card, so they won't get mixed up. Place the box with all the punch cards within reach and give every player a screen, a note sheet and a pen. Write down the number of the problem and your name. There is no need for a starting player because everyone is playing simultaneously. So you are ready to begin. In this game you need to figure out the three number code hidden in the machine. The numbers of the code range from 1 to 5 and they can appear more than once. You can get to the code by experimenting and deduction. So let's start with a first guess. Take three punch cards, a blue, a yellow and a purple card. Let's take 2, 3 and 4. Every round you can check a new set of three criteria with these cards. Line up the cards to make a stack like this. You will find that only one hole punches through all three cards. Let's use that to test our code against one of the criteria. This criteria checks the blue number versus the yellow number. When we check our code here, we check whether it's true that blue is smaller than yellow, since our blue is 2 and our yellow is 3. We take the matching verification card and place it behind our code, like this. Through the punch hole you now see a cross or a mark. In this case it's a cross, which means that it's not true, so blue is not smaller than yellow. The next step is to note your findings on the note sheet. This is very important, even when you get a no. Sometimes a cross yields more information than a mark. Note the code that you checked and if it was correct or not. Maybe you can even cross out some numbers for the code. There is extra space below to write down your findings. Next, we can check another criteria with the same code. Here we check if there are no ones in the secret code. Take the verification card and check again. This is also a negative, so this is not the criterion it verifies, and at least one of the numbers has to be a 1. This round we can check one more criteria. Let's check if there are two even numbers in our combination. This time we get a check, so it is true. When we write down our findings, we can draw a few conclusions, namely there is at least one number 1, but we also have two even numbers. That means that there can only be one number 1. And the other numbers cannot be 3 or 5, so they must be a 2 or 4. That's all we conclude at the moment. 
when all players have checked the criteria of their choosing, with a maximum of 3, the round ends. All players show at the same time if they think they solved the puzzle or if they need another round, by extending their arm in a fist and giving a thumbs up or down. Anyone with a thumbs up takes the card from the code they think is right and checks all the criteria. If all are correct, it is the right code. Congratulations, you have won the game! If more players get the correct code in the same round, the player who checked the least criteria wins. But watch out, you get only one chance. If you are wrong, you are out of the game. If the code has not been found yet, the next round starts with every player choosing new numbers to check. Please note that even though you are allowed to check three criteria in a round, you better pass when you can't get any more information. The examples we present here are pretty straightforward. When you take on more difficult problems, the criteria also get more difficult. This is for instance criteria 33. It checks if a single color is even or odd, but you don't know which color it checks. So is it worthless? Quite the opposite. Let's say that our sample code 2, 3 and 4 gives a negative result. That means that blue is odd, or yellow is even, or purple is odd. Half of the possibilities for this criteria are gone. Why not write this down on your note sheet, like this? All criteria are important to break a code. In our example we had this card, in which you test which color's number is larger than the others. This means that the code cannot consist of three equal numbers, because otherwise this criteria would never be true. So it is wise to keep that in mind while picking your numbers. Often you can draw conclusions before you even have checked any criteria. Let's look at our example again. We've concluded that it can be three ones, because one has to be bigger than the other two. But can the code contain two ones? According to this criteria, you can have two ones and a two, three, four or five. But can you determine which number the third variable has? This criteria shows you how many even numbers there are. If it is odd, the third variable can be a 3 or a 5. If it's even, it can be a 2 or a 4. Since you're always stuck with two possibilities and every code is solvable, there cannot be two ones. Without checking anything, this criteria has become much more valuable. As a programmer, Turing Machine is a must-have for my collection. The old school punch cards bring me back to the early computer era. And on top of that, the puzzle solving mechanism is fabulous. It reminds me a lot of the game Mastermind. But in this game, all players can join the puzzle and every game is a new mindbender. As for gameplay, these types of games often require an app for hints and clues, like the search for Planet X. Turing Machine solely drives on the cards, which I think is very well done. I must say, the game has a bit of a learning curve and you will be confused the first few times when you try to solve the harder puzzles. But the complexity in the puzzles in the book has a nice build up to get you into the mindset of the game. After that, the website offers you tons of new puzzles to go through. Considering player interaction, Turing Machine is in essence a solitaire puzzle. I play it often just by myself. With more players you still play by yourself, but in my experience that's no issue, because the table talk after the game is very interesting and enjoyable. It's no exception that a game of 15 minutes leads to a discussion of equal length afterwards. All in all, this beautiful game Turing Machine is definitely one that stays in my collection and will hit the table very often. Now you know how to play Turing Machine. We hope you enjoyed the game. We would appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button for more explanation videos from Board Game Ninja. See you at another one. Bye!